saw a supermodel wandering along in baggy dungarees, you might not know it, but underneath there's a rocking hot body. We don't actually do definitive zero to 60 tests very often on world's fastest, but when you think about it, it's perhaps the most relevant test of any car's performance. After all, who isn't a stop sign racer? But you know, with all these cars, amazing performance these days, 150 miles an hour, 160 miles an hour, you never get the chance to do that. So for my zero to 60 test on this week's show, I thought, what car will I choose? After all, there are some pretty competitive ones out there. Starting with the BMW M5, 3.7 seconds. The Bentley Continental GT Speed, 4.2 seconds. Ferrari FF, 3.7 seconds. Aston Martin Vanquish, 4.0 seconds. Lexus LFA, 4.0. Mercedes SLS GT, 3.7 seconds. But the car that most surprisingly can absolutely wipe the floor with that lot is this. Prepare, as I was, to be amazed. I mean, in some ways it's unremarkable, but that's the magic of the S8. It's one of those cars, definitely, that when you see it next to you at the traffic lights, you kind of go, oh, hmm, what's that? And then of course it blow your bloody doors off. It is in every way a full-size executive Uber luxury sedan. So, as you can see, it is a big car, although it has this magnificent sort of stature and squat on the road. It is kind of low and wide. And signature Audi things like the massive grille here. It rides on appropriately massive 21-inch rims. And at the back here, it's got quad pipes and this aluminium-looking strip in between them. But here's a surprising tidbit of information. It's actually heavier than nearly all of its competition, and yet it's faster. And it achieves that, obviously, by sheer brute German force. And that's under here. So there it is. You, it almost looks a bit shoehorned in there. But that is probably one of the most powerful V8s you'll ever see. 520 horsepower, 479 foot-pounds of torque, and it's force-fed by two highly efficient turbochargers. And remember, as with all Audis, the reason the S8 is so good off the line is that power is put to the road through their famous Quattro system. And inside, well, of course, it has that extraordinary level of luxury. It's not opulent, it's just very sophisticated, as you'd expect from Audi's top flagship car. Although, I'm not sure Audi ever really intended for the passages in the rear to be the focus of attention. It really is a driver's car. Well, that's it, the S8 Audi. Super cool, super luxurious. With those levels of performance, I guess it has to be experienced, to be believed. Let's go and do zero to 60. See how fast we can make this big German mama go. All right. That's 80, that's 90, that's 100. Bloody hell. I kept on feeling I should be like pulling back on the steering wheel like a yoke instead of hitting the brakes there. That was outstandingly impressive. It's a big car and it's a heavy car, just a tad over 4,600 pounds and it'll do 3.5 seconds to from zero to 60. Whoa. Because it can go that fast, you'd think maybe that's the end of the story. Um, it isn't. It'll do a lot of other things very well. However, it is not a track car. They never intended it to, never describe it as, never expose it to being a car that you take out on track. But for everything else it's doing through these corners, it's when you get mid-corner here, find your line, get hard on it, 
bloody hell. It just kind of gorges itself on torque. And I mean, I'm not actually for a change using the pedal shifters, the Tiptronic side of things, because it's just, it's not that it's like a PDK, but it's got so much torque that you always seem to be in the right place. Holy shit, you just gotta be careful on braking because you reach the end of the straight and realize you're doing 120 miles an hour heading for a 70 mile an hour corner. Whoa. So that's probably the time to talk about the brakes and when you hit them, massive steel vented rotors and they do slam it to a stop. For any of you that have been out on a racetrack and had the chance to drive more than one type of car, you know that you always have to modify what you do to suit the vehicle you're in. Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, front engine, rear engine, mid engine. There's a lot of variables and you kind of cut your cloth accordingly. So when you have a big, heavy, super fast car like the S8, the first thing you do is have to accept and allow for the fact that from turning, when you come off the straight and come off the brakes, there's gonna be quite a lot of weight transfer. So it buries the nose and I come off and it rolls and takes the set just like that. And then you're able to sort of adjust from there. If, if you did go in too hard, you're just gonna plow off as though you're in a John Deere tractor. If I had to describe what the Quattro system feels like, is when you get the line and throttle application right, you get to this point in the corner, accelerate hard, and you know you're getting the push from the rear tires. Meanwhile, if you, if you get it spot on, the front tires are like, you know, climbing a wall and your hands are just like scrabbling for grip. It really is very beneficial. I must confess that the steering is a little off-putting in a way, in a performance setting around town, actually, I thought it was magnificent. It's very firm, very spot on. But out here on the track, uh, I think it's because it's a variable sort of pressure setup, you, you get this less sort of movement at high speed. So obviously allows the car to you know, not react quite so uh, overtly to everything you do. But it does give me a little wandery kind of feel. Let's just analyze what's happening here. 4,600 pound car. It's got 520 horsepower, 479 foot-pounds of torque. The car's doing so much work, and it has to. The electronic suspension has to do so much. The traction control has to do so much, because that's the only way you could get this level of performance. It's almost like one of those top assassins that you see in a movie who gets in and out, does the job, kills the bad guy, and everyone's left wondering, what the hell was that? It's just surprising, I guess, is the point I'm trying to say. Check back each week for more on your eBay Motors mobile app.